So all these like grass and corn fed hippies come to town for this film festival and it's it's causing some real problems in the sewer. Well, howdy ho! And welcome back to Privy. Privy is a podcast about bathrooms recorded from my home bathroom. I'm your host, Hunter Hoover. And I love bathrooms. Uh, welcome back and um, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, joyous, whatever you do. Um, it, it it's the Christmas season, and and for those of you who who are out there and, and are like, well, you can't start Christmas until I, well, guess what? It's after Thanksgiving, so now it's Christmas, or whatever your holiday cheer is made up of. I wanted to give you just a brief uh, bathroom update. There's a couple things that have been going on in my life. The first is, and and I, I've shared this 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 update in person to a couple people, but I would be remiss if on this podcast I didn't share just this brief story of the gentleman who was lotioning himself so aggressively at the gym. Um, and I know we're coming out real like Merry Christmas, you know, hit you with the Christmas right up front, and then instantly begin talking about a man lotioning himself, but. You don't see something like this very often. And so when you do, it sticks with you and it goes with you. Um, so I arrived at the gym as I usually do. I got my bag on my back and uh, I go into the gym to change into my gym attire, you know, discount Walmart shorts and budget shoes that are falling apart. Uh, but as I go in and I, so the gym, the the layout it's got a couple of nooks and crannies. Those nooks and crannies are going to come in, come in to this conversation. Uh, and I round the first nook. And when I turn my head, I see a man lotioning his crannies. And what you got to know is like, so this guy, they have these benches in the gym locker room that are, they're probably six to eight foot benches. You could easily put two to three blokes clothed on one of these benches. But this dude was fitting, was sitting full spread eagle, like just total, total hog to the wind. And on a towel, he had his towel spread on the full length of this bench. And he just had, just had his legs in the, the most fierce man spread I've ever seen in my entire life. And, and he was just lotion aggressively, I should add, like lotioning his inner thigh like all the way down the entire length of thigh, lotioning it with some very, very fruity smelling lotion. And what, and that's fine. Like I, I'm all about moisturizing. You know, a dude's got to moisturize, but he, he was spreading lotion in his groin region the entire time I was changing, which I take a little bit, you know, we're talking three to five minutes of, of, of full Bentley lotion spread here. It's too much. Like in my opinion, in my humble opinion, it's too much lotion spread. And the best part was, so I, I'm seeing, I'm kind of like laughing in my own head, but what puts me over the edge to not laughing in my own head, but now laughing somewhat out loud, but not like loud enough to where Captain Lotion can hear me is another gentleman comes into the gym locker room and as he rounds his nook, he gets full sight of dude lotioning crannies and just goes, oh, gosh, and just turns back and walks all the way to the front of the locker room where, like, nobody takes those lockers. Um, but he was like, I am not taking a locker next to lotion guy. Um, so hey, lotion guy, if you're out there, you just keep hydrating um, and, you know, Good on you. Uh, you really had it hanging out there for all to see. So, but again, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, um, whichever. Yeah, um, this year we here at Privy, we need to take another look at something. So last year, um, I I dived in, stuck my stuck my pinky toe in to the world of South Park, uh, via one of their beloved Christmas characters, Mr. Hanky, the Christmas Pooh. And this year, we want to take a look back to Mr. Hanky, this beloved character, 
And while we're not here to discuss, again, the difference between Mr. Hanky and Nutty the Christmas Dump, which I, I, you know, I, I shared my thing, but like justice for Nutty, you know what I'm saying? But this year, I want to discuss Mr. Hanky's second appearance on South Park. We need to talk about it because it's Christmas and we need to just get it straight going here. Oh, bless up. I got to tell you right now, the orange vanilla polar seltzer. If you want to trade, if you want to treat yourself something, if you want, if you want a little holiday treat for yourself this year, go get yourself a 12 pack, go get yourself a soda, but go get yourself a 12 pack of polar seltzer in the orange vanilla variety. You won't be disappointed to me. It is the most un-LaCroix, LaCroix-like product. This is not a LaCroix thing. Last week when we talked to Jerry Crane, um, shout out Jerry. Thank you for, for letting us um, invade your space. Um, we, you know, we talked about the bougie-ness of this is not a LaCroix ad, but like Polar Seltzer is it. Uh, and the orange vanilla flavor is very good. So if you want yourself a little Christmas treat there, hit that up. It's very good. Uh, but... We need to talk about South Park and we need to talk about Mr. Hankey's second appearance. And so again, to give some context, um, you might be asking yourself, well, is this guy a South Park? Like, you know, does he know? Like, is this like a South Park fan? Is he a, is he a, one of these deep cut Louis? And this is my interaction with South Park. I watched about three minutes of a clip of South Park when I was in high school was making fun of some Mormon people, whatever. And then I watched the entirety of Mr. Hankey's debut episode last year. And now I have seen about one and a half more episodes in research for this, this week's episode of the podcast. So, um, this, the, the episode it, you really have to view two episodes to get some context. The, the episode title that, that is the official Christmas episode is Merry Christmas, Charlie Manson. Uh, But in research for this, and to give context to what is going on, because I started that episode and I got a little ways in, I was like, that something has happened to Mr. Hankey between the last time I saw Mr. Hankey and Mr. Hankey's appearance in Merry Christmas, Charlie Manson. But research is research, and I had to to go watch uh, another episode, um, which was, and uh, content warning here, uh, I didn't name this episode, and what I can tell from the writers of South Park is this is kind of their humor. But the episode is called Chef's Chocolate Salty Balls. Now, he creates a treat in the episode that are these little round like meatball looking things, but they're chocolate and they've got like sea salt. Chef's Chocolate Salty Balls. They know what they did, but like it is what they are. Um, also chef is black. If, if you're listening to this and haven't seen South park, chef is black. So that's why it's chocolate. Just a little context there. The joke goes on for some time. Uh, anyway, Kyle, I think, I think it's Kyle. I, I'm not really too keen on which boy is which at this point. Um, but Kyle, hears Mr. Hanky calling to him from the toilet and later the sewers and the boys go down in the sewers to figure out what's going on because it turns out some film festival has a in town has attracted so many organic living and grain fed LA residents that it is causing problems in the sewer. So all these like grass and corn fed hippies come to town for this film festival and it's, it's causing some real problems in the sewer. And so, you know, Mr. Hankey's in trouble, but he can't leave because he's only supposed to come to the surface once a year at Christmas time, whatever. And I think this is where the Hankey lore starts to shine and really set itself apart from Nutty the Friendly Dump or Nutty the Christmas Dump, whatever. Is that, because last, you know, Nutty the Friendly Dump, I mean... He really is quite similar to Mr. Hankey. Like, at best, they would be like friends or, or like cousins or something. But we find out some lore about Mr. Hankey. And the first here is that Mr. Hankey is pretty concerned with hygiene. 
So he tells the kids that, that they got to deal with this because there's too much poop. It's out of control. And so the kids go back up after these children climb into the sewer. Uh, yep. They go back up out of the sewer and tell the people of the town they will kill Mr. Hanky if they don't stop pooping. But they don't believe the kids. So Kyle has to take Mr. Hanky to the surface outside of Christmas to prove it. And they do so, and Mr. Hanky almost dies. Spoiler alert, if you haven't seen this South Park episode from like 20 years ago. Spoiler alert, Mr. Hanky almost dies in, in this episode. And what comes to the rescue of Mr. Hanky other than, it's, it's none other than Chef's Chocolate Salty Balls. Yes. Now, once Chef's Chocolate Balls revive Mr. Hanky and thus kind of not save Christmas in this episode, but like save the town, which is such a, such a Christmas theme in a non Christmas episode, but it revives Mr. Hanky. And this is where we get lore, Mr. Hanky lore point number two. And that is this, that, that Mr. Hanky is like a wizard. Not only is he a wizard, but he's a wizard who can control the poop in the sewers and cause it to rise and shoot up and out of the sewers, thus freaking out all of the townspeople in, in South Park. Essentially, the premise of this episode is the kids... So, that, so that's the background. That's what happened prior to this. So in, in the episode Merry Christmas, Charlie Manson, which is the second official Christmas episode and the... the uh, yeah, Mr. Hanky plays kind of a, a secondary role here. And essentially the premise of the show is the kids go on a road trip with one of the boys' mom to Nebraska to visit his grandma. And on the way, on the roadside, they see a sign advertising Mr. Hanky, who, that, who is going to be at the mall. And so through a strange turn of events, um, and it's weird, but Charles Manson actually ends up taking the boys to the mall. Yes, criminal... <coughs> known criminal Charles Manson, yes, takes these this group of small children to the mall uh, to visit Mr. Hanky. Now, at this point, I'm about two and a half episodes of South Park in, so I'm not sure if things like this happen often, but there seem to be these weird, like these children are involved in adult situation gags that are ongoing. Um, but yeah. So they get to the mall, and of course there's a line to see Mr. Hanky, and the question is posed. Mr. Hanky is also supposed to be appearing at a mall across town. How can Mr. Hanky be in two places at once? And of course the answer is his magical powers, which we have already seen evidenced in Mr. in 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 Chef's chocolate salty balls. So yeah. So the boys are waiting in line for this for Mr. Hanky to meet Mr. Hanky, even though they've already met him and seem to have like a personal connection with him. Whatever. <clears throat> but while they're doing so, Charles Manson is watching a Christmas special in a TV store or something. And they've swapped all the characters of the Grinch with Mr. Hanky Poo stand-ins. These include Grinchy Poo and Cindy Lou Poo. It's pretty compelling stuff. So not only is Mr. Hanky a South Park character, he's also a celebrity. One to the point where the media has, has made Mr. Hanky content such as Grinchy Poo and and Cindy Lou Poo. Now, I, now, okay. So this is where the show to me gets to be a little meta, and I believe that in the world we already know in the world of South Park, Mister Hanky is real to these kids. He's not a figment of their imagination. They've met him. However, much like Santa Claus is real, much of the media gets their kick with Christmas by making media suggesting Santa is real, but they do it in a way which also lets them key in like, hey, we also don't really think he is. And that's their problem. 
But they seem to be the 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 world that the South Park creators have built seem to swap Mr. Hanky in for Santa. Now, the mall Hanky is not the real Mr. Hanky, and the fake tells them Mr. Hanky isn't real, which of course triggers Kyle or Cartman, whichever one has a special relationship with this turd, this festive holiday turd. I don't again, I don't I cannot tell you which child this is if you're a south park fan and you're just like triggered because i can't figure out which kid is which i know that kenny dies a lot more on that later in this episode charlie manson rediscovers the magic of christmas turns himself in and they all learn about the happiness of christmas yay jingle but you know santa claus is coming to town they they found the joy of christmas the greatest way to spread christmas cheer is sing loud for all to hear you know what i'm saying Charles Manson discovers this magic and changes. And here's the deal. And I, and I want to note this. Santa exists in the world of South Park. He's been in it before. He was in the original Mr. Hanky the Christmas Pooh episode. A- and so the writers seem set on this running gag. And so last year, you know, this, and, and by the way, the running gag is this. Wouldn't it be funny if not just like we're, they're not su- suggesting that in South Park they don't do Santa. They're suggesting that that in addition to Santa Claus, the town of South Park or the world that South Park exists in also observes Mr. Hankey and the culture in the media treat Mr. Hankey much like the culture in South Park and our world here treat Santa. So there you go. The writers seem set. And last year, we, we used Mr. Hankey to discuss the woes and possible foul play between Mr. Hankey, the Christmas Pooh, and Nutty, the Friendly Dump. But I, I, I want to use the about 35 to 40 minutes of South Park I have watched thus far to be able to understand and discuss Mr. Hankey to say something. And that's this. I had to, and I mean had here. Now, one could argue that I could have went out and bought a box set DVDs or went on Amazon or something and bought, but like, just bear with me. I had to watch South Park on HBO Max. And, and, And I want, and I want this to be, I want this to be understood loud and clear here. HBO Max can go ahead and frig straight off. That's, that's where I'm at. I'm so mad at HBO Max. HBO, whoever whoever the jack wagon at HBO is, they can go sniff dirt. Here's why. So for those of you who don't know, the people of HBO Max are awful tyrants who only care about sponging you for every dollar. Like that's their goal. They they don't care about your entertainment. They don't they don't give six turds about it. Mr. Hanky'd be pissed if he knew what HBO Max was doing. That's all I'm saying about that. In fact, not only would he be so upset, but HBO's track record is as soon as they just don't feel like it anymore, they just delete Mr. Hanky off the face of the planet. He's gone forever. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well, what are, Hunter, why are you so mad? So here's the thing. HBO, um, home box office entertainment, uh, you know, it used to be, it used to be like where you'd go watch Game of Thrones, but... Once everybody entered the streaming wars, HBO had to get their finger in that pie, and they came out with HBO Max. And it was pretty hot for a minute. Like, there was a minute where where people were gangbusters about HBO Max. But what happened was, they're stupid. And they began to delete shows, cutting their own shows. I'm not talking like shows they've bought. They did that too. I'm talking about shows that are labeled HBO Max original content like that they produced and deleting them from the platform, not selling them to a different platform, not releasing the rights. So that way maybe somebody else could pay them royalties to put that. No, deleting it forever. It's gone. They also cut bunches of independent TV projects, things they had purchased from comedy central. I'm looking at you, South park. I'm looking at you, Mr. Hanky. Like, I think HBO Max would have some gall to delete South Park. But, like, if the going gets tough enough, they might. Because 
they they have canned so many and they're and and I know you're thinking, well, just go watch it on Netflix when they but no, they're deleting them. Like they're gone. They they don't exist outside of any DVDs of those shows that existed prior to that. And the reason that I'm so frustrated with HBO and why they just are stupid to me is they canned two of the programs I signed up for. So like I, I got on HBO and I was like, Oh baby, Oh baby. I'm going to watch these shows so good. And like within a week of me signing up to watch these shows, HBO deleted them forever. And I'm sure HBO has their reasons, but I don't care. Your reasons are stupid a tax write-off is a dumb reason to do this, and and I'm sure that oh, I, we apologize. Um, but HBO took the hit already. That's why, if you notice, if you're on Instagram and and probably now that you've listened to this, you're gonna get all sorts of HBO ads um, because Mr. Officer Bezos is always listening. But if you'll notice, they're trying to give away like three months for two bucks right now because they're scrambling because people are mad, and rightfully so. Because they're stupid. Like, it is a stupid choice. It's a dumb thing. They did this to save a buck and try to get ahead. And they did it for a tax write-off. So, the reason I want to bring this up, and I want to, and I want to use Mr. Mr. Hanky the Christmas Pooh to discuss this, is from what I can tell with the limited, again, very limited interaction, we're talking like two and a half episodes of South Park I've watched, but... It seems to me that South Park is the type of show that really goes for it. And what I mean by that is they're not afraid to, like, go for the throat for anybody. Like, from what I can tell, nobody is safe. They, they just make fun of everything. And I, my challenge is this, and this is what I want to see. It's Christmas. Maybe, you know, it's probably too late now. I'm sure they've already got, like, the production on the Christmas special for Mr. Hanky already done. But please let there be a Mr. Hanky this year. If there is, I'll watch it. That's that's my promise to South Park. Um, But my my challenge is this to the people at South Park and the people behind South Park. Y'all got to make an episode that's so friggin' meta about how dumb HBO is for doing this thing. And like, and I get why you might not because you're on their platform and God forbid HBO like totally delete your whole thing. Like, like South Park's pretty big. Like when I'm going through the seasons, there's a lot of them. Um, but man, how sweet would that be to log into HBO Max and just see an episode of South Park where they're just riffing on how stupid HBO is right now? Like... Man, that it I would I would pay for that episode. Mr. Hanky, Mr. Hanky the Christmas Pooh would want you to do that. That's all I'm saying about it. Like like I've never met the guy, but the two and a half episodes that I have observed his performance, like we know he's a we know he's a turd of magic. We know he cares about hygiene. That tells me that that he loves animation magic. And he wants the right thing to be done. Hygiene. So like, South Park, please make this. Please dunk on HBO. Because HBO, and HBO, if you're listening to this, like, I, I still, I've, I've already paid you for some time. So I have your stuff. So you probably hear this and you go, well, I don't really care because he already gave us our money. But I'm here to tell you that you're dumb. And you're making a stupid choice by doing this to these shows. That's, that's my two cents. I'm not going to lie. I was going to do a poo in the news this week, but, um, it, it takes, I, I need to curate that a little more. I, because I, I went to find one and it's just, it's just article after article of, of people being awful to each other. Here's the deal. Here's my, here, you know, I, I challenged South Park and nobody listens to this nonsense anyway. So, but like, here's the deal, just kind of humanity in general. It, it's the holiday season. Quit being stupid with the bathrooms. Like, can we can we just have a situation in a world where when I go to check bathroom news, it's not like it's not the first five or not some pervert sticking a camera in a bat. Like, can we not? I'm just done with it. Like, stop it. 
cut it out. And HBO, undelete these shows. Do it now. Mr. Hankey would want it. Well, that's enough. That's enough of that. Um, this brings us to the end of another episode of Privy. Thank you for being here. Merry Christmas. Um, as always, you can follow the show on social media. We're at PrivyCast on all social media. We we have a. I'm I'm working on getting a Discord organized. I'm an old fogey and don't understand Discord. Um, but if you want, uh, search for privy cast on discord i think that's how you find it i'll try to put that out there a little more maybe in the boobly dopper below um we're also on on reddit now r slash privy cast so yeah just if wherever you're on social media just track us down you can follow me i'm at owlet7 uh you can send us an email privycast at gmail.com we'd love to hear from you send us episode suggestions Anything that you really want, that's we, we'd love to hear from it. Not anything. Um, I don't know why I say that. I always say it, and then I instantly go, well, that was a bad idea. Somebody's going to send me a picture of a turd. Actually, if you have a wild picture of a turd and you just can't live without sending it in, I mean, like, I will take them. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, like I will take them. I want to I want to take a moment here. We had a, a rating that was left us. Um, if you want to leave a rating or review, the five star options are preferred. And if you leave us a, a review, if you type out a review, we'll read it here on the pod. Uh, and so the, the man himself, JP, shout out to the man himself, JP, five stars. The potty cast says the crappiest pot around. Hey, thank you. Thank you for the, uh, uh, that's in good fun. And I, and I really appreciate it. Um, we appreciate the five star helps people find the show, leave us a rating or review, and we'll, we'll try to read those here. Um, thank you. The man himself, JP for that review. Um, as always, we want to thank Kevin McLeod for the use of barroom ballet as our intro and outro music. This has been another episode of privy. Thank you so much for joining us. And now as always, don't forget to flush. Thank <laughs> you.